Mark Twain once said this about the Bible. I have no problem with those parts of the Bible I don't understand. It's those parts of the Bible I do understand that gives me fits. Today's gospel passage certainly fits into that category. Today's gospel passage illustrates something I bet most of you have never thought about before. One of the easiest things in the world to do is to become a Christian. But at the same time, one of the most difficult things in the world is to be a Christian. What Jesus says is totally in opposition to the typical attitude in our modern society. Years ago, there was a bumper sticker that became rather popular that simply said two words, I want. Now that tag would fit on just about every car on the road. We live in the world of I want. I want my rights. I want my happiness. I want my way. I want my money. And I want it by hook or by crook. We've all heard the expression, do your duty. Well, Jesus tells us just the opposite. Do what is not your duty and do more than your duty. That is going the second mile. What does this mean? It means, first of all, be willing to give up your rights. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. In the first century, a slap on the cheek was a way of insulting someone. A slap on the other cheek was yet another way of insulting someone. You see, there were two things that would make any Jew mad 2000 years ago. One would be a spit in his face and the other would be to backhandedly slap him on the cheek. In fact, that is exactly what they did to Jesus. Then they spat on his face and beat him and others struck him with the palms of their hands. We read that in Matthew chapter 26, verse 67. Even a slave would rather be struck on his back by a whip than slapped on his cheek by his master. Jesus said, as hard as it may be, you should turn the other cheek. Let me emphasize that Jesus was not dealing with Christian passivism. He was talking about personal revenge, not social justice. What Jesus is talking about is retaliation, revenge, retribution. Let me give you a simple rule. Be quick to defend others, but be slow to defend yourself. Abraham Lincoln once said, I never give an explanation of my actions to my critics. He said, the reason is simple. My friends don't need an explanation and my enemies wouldn't believe it. Second, be willing to give more than you are asked. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. Now the situation that Jesus describes was very common in the Bible days. If one person took another person to court and the person did not have the money to pay the judgment, the court could order payment of the lawsuit in clothing. You could take the man's tunic, you could take the man's shirt, but you could not take his coat. Now the shirt was a type of tunic that was worn as an undergarment. The coat was an outer garment that served as a blanket at night. Most people in those days owned only one coat and perhaps one or two shirts. 
but jesus goes beyond both the law of the land and the mosaic law he said if you lose a lawsuit but the judgment does not satisfy the plaintiff and there are still bitter hard feelings voluntarily give more than the judgment if it will make things right and thereby you can settle things not only legally but you can settle things morally i heard about a man that was going to celebrate his anniversary and he went to his wife and asked her what she would like she said she would like some perfume so he went to a department store and headed straight for the perfume counter and told the saleswoman that he wanted to buy his wife a nice bottle of perfume for their anniversary well she pulled out a container of their best perfume and told him it was on sale for just a thousand rupees he said well that's really more than i want to spend what else do you have she pulled out a smaller bottle for 700 he said that's still too high give me your most economical brand of perfume well she pulled out an extremely small bottle that cost just 200 he still wasn't satisfied with the price and so he said look lady let me be very specific show me something that is real cheap The clerk reached across the counter and handed him a mirror. You see, a Christian should always be willing to give more than he is asked. Oh, it may cost you more in the short run, but it will gain you a lot more in the long run. Third, be willing to go farther than you are required. and whoever compels you to go 1 mile go with him too remember that israel was occupied territory it was controlled by the roman empire the romans had a law that greatly embittered the jewish people by law a roman soldier could compel a jew to carry his weapons or his knapsack or any burden that he had 1 mile It didn't matter whether the Jewish person was working in the field or on his way to the synagogue or to worship the Roman soldier had the right to conscript this man and force him to carry his burden Every Jewish boy had marked off 1 mile from his house and had memorized the exact distance Whenever a Jewish boy or man was compelled to go that mile he would walk that mile down to the very foot put that burden down and with a bitter look on his face make the point not one foot more now the pharisees had all of life boiled down to the minimum they practiced what i call a minimum morality they boiled life down to just the minimum of what they had to do i was at a petrol pump a couple of weeks ago i was filling up my car and a man got out of a car and walked over to me and said do you know this area very well i said pretty well he said can you tell me how to get to this place well i didn't recognize the street but i put it on the gps systems pulled up the map and found the street as i began to try to tell this man how to get there i realized that it was going to be very difficult for him to find it because there were a lot of turns and a lot of lefts and a lot of rights and it was just not going to be very easy to get there now quite frankly i was in a hurry my colleague told me that it was easier to just ask him to follow us and we take him there rather than trying to explain to him as it was very difficult well the man said mr that's okay i'll just try to find it myself i said just follow me so i was following my map and this man was following me it took us about 20 minutes to get 
to the right place where he needed to go. As I was turning around to go back to my home, I rolled the window down and he said, Sir, thank you for your time. I said, You are very welcome. He then told me that it was in this hostel that his daughter was murdered and found dead. We spent time talking with him and walked him in the office. All of a sudden, that second mile did not seem very long to me at all. You will find that when you go that second mile, you will not only be a blessing, but you will be blessed. Finally, be willing to grant all that is needed. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. Now the implication here is that the person doing the asking has a real genuine need. If it is a real need, you should meet that need. Now, that does not mean that you are required to respond to every foolish or every selfish respect. I once met a man on the streets of Mumbai and he said, Sir, I haven't eaten in several days. Would you give me some money? I said, No, but I tell you what I will do. I will give you a free meal. I will buy you some clothes. And if you want to rest, you can use our facility at any time. That man began a tirade on how I was rude and people like me didn't care about people like him. And why couldn't I just give him what he wanted? You see, he did not want help. He wanted money for some other purpose. And those are two different things. Psalm 112 verse 5 says, A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Yes, when someone comes to you and has a real need and asks to borrow something, loan it to them. Even better yet, if you can, give it to them. But do it with discretion. I want to tell you what you already know. It's not easy going the second mile. But let me tell you this. If you only go the first mile, you are a victim. If you go the second mile, you are a victor. The first mile is the lone mile. The second mile is the love mile. The first mile is the slave mile. The second mile is the smile mile. The really successful people in life and the really happy people in life and the really blessed people in life are second milers. Going the second mile will make you a success. Clock watchers never ever climb very high. There is something more important than quitting time. There is something more important than getting every little second out of your lunch hour. There is something wonderfully Christian about someone who goes beyond and above what is asked for or required or expected just as a habit of life. Amen.